There are hundreds of thousands of data points that go into the flood forecast. Some of those from a source you may not expect. In this Iowa's News Now exclusive, I take you on the airborne snow survey, flying low to forecast high waters. And get a snow core. Every day, hundreds of snow measurements are taken across the United States, but there are vast areas that cannot be reached by weather observers. That is where the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Twin Otter Aircraft comes into play. The mission? Snow survey. Iowa's News Now got an exclusive ride along with the mission to measure the snowpack across northeast Iowa. Are you ready to go? Ready to go. Thank you, ready to go. This mission will be a four hour trip. We'll be collecting data over areas the River Flood Forecast Center would like to know more about. Twin Otter NOAA 46 Flying Cloud Tower, wind 3106, right to a left of takeoff, left turn approved. With nearly 2,000 lines that need to be surveyed. And with good weather in the forecast, we're on our way to help with the 2020 flood forecast. 46, 5,300, climbing 5,500 VFR. After departing Flying Cloud Airport just southwest of Minneapolis, our 30 minute jaunt to the southwest corner of Minnesota will give the two person crew time to dial in their instruments and make their plan of attack. So the machine the back and forth, back the plane, figures out the amount of water quantity in the snowpack in terms of what's called snow water equivalent or SWE. Um, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to fly over a series of survey lines, flight lines in Minnesota and Iowa, try to get an idea of what the snow is looking like there and um, send that information upon landing to the National Weather Service. They're going to use that to predict uh, spring flood predictions and uh, snowmelt predictions for later down season. The first survey line will be just southeast of Rochester, Minnesota, along Interstate 90. Prior to flying each survey line, the mission commander will go over a summary of the flight path for safety reasons. We'll be just south of I-90. A couple towers at the beginning, 300 footers, 265, 315, all lower than our level. To get accurate data, the NOAA crew needs to fly lower than aircraft are typically allowed to operate, and that requires a special waiver. At 500 feet, communication towers and wind turbines are just some of the obstacles the pilot needs to be aware of. The flight line itself is typically clear of these obstacles, but not always. More on that later. Looking good. Kind of see how the highway straightens out up there in front of you, two lanes. You see his scan and he's looking inside, outside, fighting for 500 feet over the ground, trying to keep that airspeed well, safely within the limits, that ground speed at. 100, 120 knots. The Twin Otter aircraft is used for a variety of missions over land and sea. The complicated flight patterns needed for snow survey require more experienced crew members. The flying is a little bit more dynamic, it's a little more challenging. Um, the software is a little more dynamic and a little more challenging as well. Um, so we send, tend to send our best people out here for this project. Depending how close the survey lines are to each other, the crew can hit 10 to 15 per flight and up to about 30 a day. Collecting the data is a rather simple process, which is done from the front seat of the aircraft. We just did line Minnesota 416. On that line, there were 7.1 centimeters of snow water equivalent. So 7.1 centimeters of water effectively averaged across that line. We're in Iowa, by the way. We made it. About halfway through our trip uh, is survey line Iowa 206, which starts near Riceville and continues to Saratoga. The Twin Otter crew can immediately tell there might be an issue with this line as wind turbines dot the landscape. Windmills at the end, we'll keep an eye out for those. If we need to abort it, we'll abort it, no problem. All tower in sight, one tower over the town in sight. Better. About halfway through the survey line, new wind turbines are in fact right in the plane's path, and therefore the line is aborted. But it's not a difficult process to change the strategy going forward. These lines, this line has probably been around for years. But as windmills continue to go up, which is fine, you know, um, we just need to adapt our, our survey strategy. But they are interested in, in this area for, for whatever reason, so maybe they'll move it against this road that doesn't have any windmills or obstacles on it. Yeah. So now I'm just going to make a note that Iowa 206 is not really a viable or safe uh, option. After two more low-level passes across northeast Iowa, ending by Waterloo, it's time to begin the flight home. Line complete, 4.1 centimeters. Nice work. There are many more lines across the upper Midwest, which will be tackled in the weeks ahead. Missions like this keep the 10 to 15 NOAA pilots out for a long duration of time throughout the year. 
all the snow up here is eventually going to melt in the spring. Uh, the more information we can tell the Weather Service about what the status is, because it's just us out here. You know, we're we're the ones looking around at the at the features, what the snow is doing, giving them the data, and they can make their their flood predictions from there.